Welcome to another line upon line Bible study going verse by verse through the book of First Timothy. First Timothy chapter one, verse seven and eight. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. All right, so these folks that are desiring to be teachers are the ones who have been turned aside in verse 6 from the faith of verse 5. Now, the mark of a Laodicean Christian and the Laodicean church age is teachers. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Now, this crowd that is teaching is teaching the law, and they don't know what the law says, nor what the law's purpose is for mankind in the church age. This matter was settled back in Acts chapter 15 when the apostles and elders got together to dispute the purpose of the law. Acts 15 verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Notice here, there are teachers that are teaching the law of Moses for salvation. Look at the response in verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Look at verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between them, uh, between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So the whole idea that one must keep the law for salvation or keep the law to retain his salvation is obviously a doctrine of devils. Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. John chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the disputation over the law in Acts 15, it's because it came by Moses and those were Jews. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law reveals that a man is, sinner, is a sinner because a man cannot keep the law. Therefore, he needs grace and he needs the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Romans chapter 3 and verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. So back in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, they, these folks desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm, but we know, you can be sure of this, that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Romans chapter 7 
Romans chapter 7, Paul says this, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Now, we don't use the law for salvation, but we have the law, and we use the law as a moral code for life. And that's the key. May God bless.